Hey there, Bible buddies. I've got another Bible review for you today. And this one is from the brand that got me initially interested in collecting vintage Bibles in the first place. It's a Bible by Collins, and it's a King James Version, New Brevier Edition. So, we'll go ahead and take a look at the cover here. Now, this is a genuine leather cover. I'm not too sure what they meant back then by genuine leather. Uh, nowadays, I think for the most part, genuine leather is kind of resigned to pigskin. I don't know if that was the case um, back then, uh, but it's just listed as a genuine leather cover. You can see here that Holy Bible is imprinted nice and deep on the cover, and it is kind of offset. I'm not sure why they used to do this. It was often the case with these older Bibles. I don't know if they maybe centered it at one point and they realized that it was kind of weird if you have the yap, it doesn't look center, so maybe they just put it purposely off-center. Uh, but you'll typically see this is the case with older Bibles. They'll kind of raise it up and to the left, and it's pretty standard, especially for Collins Bibles. So we'll go ahead and take a look. This one is a full yap cover, or maybe close to full yap cover. <laughs> I don't want to press too hard because the leather is so old, um, but very close to full yap cover. Uh, and there is kind of a perimeter line there. I'll go ahead and show you the grain and leather. The grain is very nice and deep. I'll take a look at the spine. The perimeter line there carries over on the spine. And then you see it says Holy Bible Red Letter Edition. It is marked concordance. And then it does say Colin here at the bottom. Colin's here at the bottom. Uh, you can see there is a little bit of a kind of warping here. And that's probably because whoever had it uh, before me had it sitting upright on the shelf. Uh, I would definitely recommend if you're going to store your Bibles, lay them flat. Do not stand them up on the shelf. Uh, because this is usually what happens to the ends. The ends will kind of get flattened here. And then usually the book, the book block will start to droop. Um, so if you are going to store your Bibles for a long time, definitely recommend laying them down flat. I'll go ahead and take a look at the back cover. There's nothing really especially crazy on the back cover other than that deep grain. Now I have a feeling this is a press grain because, um, you know, it's a little too perfect. I don't see any kind of like natural marks or anything like that. Um, so I would imagine this is going to be like a press grain. You'll see here that the leather cover did tear. And this does uh, tend to happen. And again, if you if you if you're leaving your Bible kind of sitting upright on the shelf, uh, it'll be more inclined to do this. Um, but that was the case with this one. It did get a little tear here in the leather. And this leather is this leather is pretty thin and pretty flexible. Um, certainly, given the age, this one is from 1955. I'll show you guys how you got, uh, and I will show you guys how you can figure that out uh, in Collins Bible. It's actually pretty easy. So go ahead and get it opened up. You can see the corner work here. I'll go ahead and show it to you. Again, for whatever it's worth in these older Bibles, but sometimes they have nice corners. These corners, I think, are just kind of average. And then on the back there, you can see where it's imprinted with uh, genuine leather. And I do have a little sticker here from a company, uh, Walls Book Stationery, Oil City, Pennsylvania. So I'm assuming that's who uh, initially sold this Bible new. Um, and then, you know, obviously it's transferred hands a few times over the years. But uh, now there is a paste down liner here. Uh, and this material is like a synthetic. And then on this side, it's like a like a paper. Um, so I'm guessing here the synthetic liner kind of butts up here into the block and then the paper kind of covers that. And so we'll take a look here at the book block and you can see that there's white head and tail bands and there is red under gold art gilt and this gold is something to be reckoned with. It's a pretty nice gold. I'm not going to lie. Collins always did a very nice job with their, with their book construction. And take a look at the bottom there and there's your white tail band. Now the ribbon is, um, for all you people who complain about crossways ribbons, uh, take a look at this doozy. <laughs> this is this is pretty standard back then. You see this ribbon uh, pretty often, and it's almost like a I don't even know like a, just like a braided nylon ribbon. It is very thin and very flimsy, and I will tell you from experience that if the whip, if the ribbon gets wet, uh, it will it will tend to break very easily. Like say if it were wet in the middle and you kind of pulled on it a little too tough, it'll just whoop, pop right off. Um, so definitely not the not the best of ribbons out there, but uh, one that is used quite often in these older editions. So let's go ahead and get into the text block. And you have the original price there. Oh, a whopping $7.25. I love leaving these old prices here only because it's it's nice to see the, uh, I guess the inflation from over the years. You know, a Bible like this nowadays might be, I don't know, closer to $100, I would imagine for full yet, maybe more, $150. Um, certainly the quality, the quality of this Bible is very nice. We have a couple sheets of thicker paper here. Uh, you know, granted this is the end sheet, but this sheet is pretty thick too. I wouldn't say like a card stock, um, but certainly like a thicker paper. And you have your presentation page. You got your family register page. Thankfully this one was clean. Children's names, marriages, and deaths. And you have another kind of thick page there with an illustration on the other side of it. I'll show you guys the caption there. So you can take a look, that's kind of a standard caption layout there. And you have your title page. 
the Holy Bible, authorized King James Version. And then at the bottom there, Collins Clear Type Press. Uh, and you have the model down there at the bottom. It's a new brevier edition, uh, an 8VO, which I think is Octavo, uh, and REF for references. And that tells you basically the font type, the size of the page, and then any additional features, in this case, references, obviously. So we'll take a look. Keep going here. Now on the back you have the license page, and this I always thought was really cool with Collins Bibles. They they did get licensing uh, from uh, from the Queen, I guess <laughs> Queen Victoria. It looks like um, they got licensed to print this, and it does tell in here uh, the specifics. So you can see that it says, let me see if I get how close I can get here, but it does say new brevier type, octavo size, and then to consist of one hundred thousand copies. So the, I guess the text block they printed one hundred thousand of them. And then it also gives the year, which is the 27th day of October, 1955. So it's kind of cool that they give you all that information there. I really do appreciate this. And I wish more uh, publishers would, would do something similar to this instead of their kind of standard cryptic codes. Uh, this is just this just makes it a lot easier <laughs> to deal with uh, finding information on the Bible. And then you can see the bottom there, printed in Great Britain. And then we have the standard uh, King James Version Epistle Dedicatory. And then we have the names of the Old and New Testament books and what page they're located on. And then you have your table for signs and, and descriptors there. Then you have the first book of Moses called Genesis. Gets right into it there. Now we'll take a look here at the text. I'll kind of pause it. It's a very nice text. I love this. Um, I love this layout. It's a double column. I mean, not, not quite everybody knows my, my favorite is a reader's layout, but <laughs> uh, there's something to be said for the kind of standard uh, old school, just double column, verse by verse, center column references. Uh, I very much I very much enjoy them. Now, if you'll take a look here, the center, the center column references are done pretty well. They actually have like little separators here for the chapters. You can see the few, uh, the few references here that refer to chapter, the remainder of chapter one. And then you have chapter two labeled here and it goes all the way down to the bottom. And then you have chapter three because chapter three is also on this page. So it's kind of nice that they separate them out like that. And you do have a double line drop cap. We'll go ahead and chunk through this a little bit. I really love the new brevier layout. And you can see here, let's take a look actually at this nice deep art gilt there. That red is just spectacular, nice and deep. They did an excellent job with the art gilt on this one. I love this nice deep red. And actually while we're here, I'll go ahead and take in nice and tight. We can take a look at the paper. Now I'm not sure, this one is not marked as India paper. I'm not too sure what sort of paper formulation there is here, but it is just a very nice paper overall. And it is very, you know, I would say if this were, if this were a new Bible, I would say that it has a creamy color, uh, but certainly because this is an older Bible, you know, the pages have oxidized kind of a light yellow color and I don't mind. I love the way the old paper looks and smells. Uh, this is certainly no exception. It looks amazing and it smells even better. I wish I could impart that to you guys. So let me do like a little virtual wafting here of the smell. <laughs> I know it's not going to do much for you. Um, but certainly if, if you could be here to smell it, it does smell pretty phenomenal. Let's go ahead and get over to the poetic books and we'll take a look. Uh, not that there's going to be any sort of poetic layout because it is just a double column verse by verse. But we'll take a look nonetheless. So there you go. The layout's pretty, pretty similar. I mean, the layout is similar. All right, let's get to the New Testament title page right quick. And we'll take a look at the New Testament. You can see real quick that it is a red letter. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. We have the New Testament title page there, red letter edition of the New Testament. And the information on the bottom. We'll go ahead and get to Matthew 5 and 6, my favorite spot. Oh, look at that red letter. <laughs> Now this red letter, granted, I'm kind of flooding you with it, um, but this red letter actually is pretty good for the era. Normally the red letter of the time would be kind of like a neon pink. Uh, and this is, it's a red and it's very red. Uh, and it is a little bit deep in spots and it's a little lighter in other spots. But for the most part, it's a pretty nice red letter. Uh, if you're a fan of red letter, uh, this one certainly will not offend you. And if you're not a fan of red letter, well, um, and certainly I would imagine any red letter would, would not be agreeable to you. Uh, but you can see that there are running headers. You have your uh, books and your chapters up at the top. You have your page numbers at the bottom. And then there is uh, a ch -ch -ch, the little timestamps at the bottom. Uh, they give you the years, approximate year dates. We'll keep flipping through. 
And this is one of the first Collins that I got. Uh, and it really just kind of set the pace for me in Collins Bibles. I'm a big advocate of Collins Bibles. I think that they were amazingly well done. Uh, and as far as I know, they were kind of, you know, mid, mid range Bibles. Uh, you know, obviously you had your Cambridge and your Oxfords that were through the roof as far as quality is concerned. Um, but I always felt like Collins were very well done in their own right. Here we go, the Bible Reader's Manual. And then we have a little introduction on how to study the Bible. And I don't want to go through this whole entire thing, but we'll kind of chunk through it a little bit. You have daily readings. Uh, the construction of the Bible. Apocryphal, a little article in the Apocryphal books. And this help section is pretty sizable. There's a harmony of the Gospels, Hebrew festivals, then you have your index there to the Holy Bible. And let's flip through it right quick. There's your index. So it's pretty chunky, the index, followed by concordance. Now I wish I wish that there could be some way. I don't know, maybe I'll do like a a secondary version of some of these Bibles, a secondary video of some of these Bibles and kind of go through all this, all the specifically, all the helps and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm not really too sure if the helps kind of repeated uh, in most of these Bibles and if they all kind of use the same ones or what, but it'd be an interesting study to do nonetheless. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that. Uh, and here's your concordance, a pretty chunky concordance there as well. And then you have your biblical gazetteer, my favorite word in all the vintage Bibles. I wish they still use that. That'd be nice. A nice little hat tip, right? Gazetteer. Then you have your maps. Now, Collins maps, 100% uh, left something to be desired. <laughs> That's the only thing that I will say about Collins. Uh, their maps were a little, um, yeah, a little lacking. I mean, they're 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 hurting. <laughs> There's, I don't have a nice way of saying it, <laughs> but um, but they're there. They're maps. If you if you wanted to use some maps and you needed something, uh, these are definitely something. They are maps. So go ahead and flip through that. Let's see if there's a code on the back. And it does look like we have a code. I really wish I knew what these production codes meant. There's an A11 up here in the top corner. And then on the bottom, you have a 4990RL, I would imagine, for red letter. Uh, so this, I would imagine, is probably the model number. And I have absolutely no clue what this A11 would stand for. But uh, like I said, all the rest of the information was there in the front. So let's go ahead and take some measurements. And I will get measurements. I guess we'll just do the, the whole yappy goodness, right? We'll take a look here. It is right at nine inches tall. And just about five and seven eighths inches wide. And it is about an inch and three eighths thick. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at the font sizes, yeah. Start first with capitals and couple F here. It's a pretty good size. Looks to be about a, uh, maybe not. It's going to make me eat my words, right? <laughs> about an eight point capital. Let's take a look at the lowercase. Find an M right there. We'll start with eight. Uh, about an eight and a half point lowercase. So uh, I would say probably about an eight and a half font all the way around. Um, which is kind of small, I guess it's, but it's, it's very much a, uh, a portable edition. You know, I guess, I think some people will probably consider this a midsize Bible. Um, let's see, let's see the text block right quick. I know a lot of people kind of prefer that eight by five text block. Yes, yeah, so this is like seven and three quarter by just over five, five and an eighth. So, uh, it's definitely that midsize range, a new breviary edition. Um, I certainly enjoy it. I really love Collins Bibles. They're, to me, they're, they're surpassed by none. Um, I, I much prefer Collins Bibles over all the, over all the rest. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. Uh, if you can give this comment, um, give this video, give this comment, give this video a like, comment, and subscribe if you can. Uh, otherwise, Bible Buddies, I will talk to you later. Bye.